Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online regulation F VGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'm going to be featuring a really fun sand team. This team was built and piloted by a Japanese player who did really well in the second global challenge with it, and it features a ton of unique picks. The team is centered around Tyranitar as well as Excadrill. Excadrill in particular is a really cool pick right now because it has an amazing matchup into common Pokemon like Fluttermane as well as Raging Bull. You also have really fun sets like Rocky Helmet Salamence with Tailwind as well as Roost, and Assault Vest Okidogi with Flying Terra as well as Corviknight. As always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battle, check out the timestamps down below, and thanks so much as always for joining me. If you enjoy, would really appreciate it if you consider leaving a like on the video or subscribing to the channel, it really helps out a ton. Anyway, let's get started. If you're interested in trying out the team, the rental code is on the screen as well as in the description below, and there's also a team report for this team written in Japanese as well as a paste link down in the description below as well. Like I mentioned in the introduction, this is a sand team that uses Tyranitar and Excadrill. Excadrill does tons of damage, but you often want to actually save it for the late game, and the idea is to use Pokemon like Salamence, Okidogi, and Corviknight to weaken up your opponent's team, then ideally get Excadrill out in a position where it can really close out battles. You have a lot of fun picks here, like Choice Band Tyranitar with Flying Terra, as well as Flying Terra Okidogi, and Flying Terra Corviknight. With a combo of all of those, it means that you have multiple Pokemon that Excadrill can safely Earthquake next to, and you have a lot of bulk here on Salamence and Corviknight, allowing you to disrupt your opponent while also healing back up with Roost. Amoongus on this team primarily used for the Trick Room and Dondozo matchups of that Pokemon. I would say I bring the least, but it's still really valuable into those compositions that I just mentioned. And you also have one really fun tech here in Upper Hand Okidogi, which allows you to bypass slower fakeouts, for example, as well as just give you an advantage against priority attacks. And so, yeah. Feel free to try out the team. Breaking down each individual Pokemon, the first one to highlight, of course, is Excadrill. Now, Excadrill is fascinating in this format because right now, Raging Bolt is everywhere, and Excadrill has one of the most positive matchups into Raging Bolt. Raging Bolt does not threaten you with very much damage, and you threaten it with tons of damage with your ground-type attacks. The most common Terra on Raging Bolt is also Fairy Terra, so if they Fairy Terra, you can just take advantage of that and just go for Iron Head as well. It's a really straightforward moveset here, max attack, max speed, and just Iron Head, Earthquake, High Horsepower, and Protect. Sometimes you can consider running Rock Slide on these sets, but I think Double Ground is really nice, because against teams that are not prepared, Earthquake can just sweep through very quickly, and High Horsepower gives you a single target move, right, which does more damage. Uh, Sand Rush is obviously going to be the ability that you want to run, and Stellar Terra is actually incredible on Excadrill, but you want to generally save it for the late game once your opponent has lost a couple of their resources. I think going for Stellar Terra early game is really, really risky, because all it takes is your opponent to make one good defensive play, and your Terra is kind of wasted. So, this Excadrill actually is a strong lead option, but is also really strong. Like, I find myself closing out more games with Excadrill, uh, just because it's a Pokemon that, if your opponent leaves unchecked in the late game, can just come out and just completely sweep, whereas in the early game, there's a fair amount of counterplay to it, right? A flying Pokemon or flying Terra, for example, can be annoying, Intimidate can be annoying, and there are a lot of things that Excadrill actually doesn't love going up against, such as, like, Water or Shifu, for example. So, yeah, I think I generally can serve Excadrill for the late game, but of course it can be a really good lead option next to Tyranitar as well. This is Choice Band Tyranitar with Flying Terra, and so the idea is to just Flying Terra and start, like, Earthquaking next to it while also going for Flying Terra Blast. Pretty straightforward Tyranitar, max HP, max attack. If you want to edit this team, I would actually recommend maybe putting some speed investment since there is Tailwind with Salamence here, and so putting a little bit more speed can help outspeed things in, you know, the plus uh, base 100 plus speed range, right? So that's just some food for thought. Um, but of course, this is going to be one of the main combos that you go with. And generally, I would say I bring Tyranitar plus Excadrill into most battles when I use this team. You've also got a Rocky Helmet Salamence here. The Salamence is meant to be speedy, as you can see, timid, 164 speed EVs, uh, and this is going to be obviously very valuable into Urshifus in particular, and things around that speed tier, uh, and then the rest is really just dumped into bulk here. <clears throat> the idea is that with Rocky Helmet, you have a really good matchup into physical attackers. This can be in particularly strong into Water Urshifu, be able to soak up damage and then retaliate back with the knockout with Draco Meteor or Air Slash. Uh, and because of Rocky Helmet, like Rocky Helmet and Roost is kind of a nasty combination where if you're going up against physical or what attackers that can't actually threaten you with that much burst damage. You can just keep healing back up while they slowly KO themselves with Rocky Helmet. Tailwind is really nice to just give you some speed control. Like, Excadrill's already fast when the sand is up, but sometimes you'll go up against opposing teams that have their own Tailwind. And so one thing that can be nice is setting up Tailwind and Sand so that Excadrill can just fully outspeed everything on your opponent's team. 
Assolvus Okidogi is actually one of my favorite parts about this team. This Pokemon is really interesting right now because Intimidate and Incineroar is just everywhere, and Rillaboom is also really common. Upper Hand is a really nice move, which allows you to flinch your opponent if they are using a priority move as well, priority attacking move in particular. So it's really nice because you can catch things like Incineroar off guard where you're able to just get an Upper Hand off immediately. Keep in mind though that Upper Hand and Fake Out are the same priority, so if you're going up against a faster Fake Out user and you try to Upper Hand them, they will be able to get that Fake Out off first. Um, but I've won games solely just off getting a surprise upper hand into something like Sucker Punch or Raging Bolt, uh, Sucker Punch Champau or Raging Bolt uh, going for Thunderclap, for example. And uh, Flying Terra is awesome on this. I actually use this Okidogi as a Landorus answer because when you lead Okidogi, people almost always click Earth Power into it. And the other move that Landorus is going to have is Sludge Bomb, right? But Okidogi doesn't really care for Sludge Bomb. And so you can just go for Flying Terra and then just go for like Knock Off immediately. The team creator actually mentioned because like, they were using Okidogi with Flying Terra so much against Landorus, you can consider something like Ice Punch instead to really scare off Landorus uh, and be able to just get a one-hit knockout onto immediately. I think if you wanted to run Ice Punch, I would actually probably get rid of Upper Hand for it because upper hand is a little bit niche uh, and having such a nice way to just beat Landorus easily I think is awesome um, but I love this Okidogi and I think Flying Terra is the main reason I'm so drawn to it. Final two mons are Corviknight and Amoongus. Corviknight's a really interesting Pokemon right now as well because once again there's Intimidate so being able to bounce back that Intimidate's nice. Mirror Armor also doubles down against other stat drops right Icy Wind Speed drops for example into Speed Booster Flutter I think is really nice and the Corviknight is nice because you've got Taunt. Taunt is really good into things like Frigoraf and other Trick Room setters as well as Amoongus, and so being able to just stop your opponent a little bit from setting up I think is really valuable. U-Turn is also really nice on this set because it means that you can lead something like Corviknight plus Excadrill, especially if you're up against opposing weather, protect Excadrill, and then U-Turn out to get Tyranitar in safely while also dealing damage. U-Turn of course does notable damage into things like Ogre Pond, Rillaboom, as well as Champau, and so it can actually you know, deal some decent damage and also break Focus Sashes. Uh, Brave Ridge is an awesome attack on this, right? There are a lot of things in this formula that are weak to flying. Grass types, Grass Terras, for example, uh, fighting types as well. And so you're able to just really threaten a lot with this. And even with no attack investment, it still does a meaningful amount. With Wikiberry and Roost, this thing can also just survive for forever. And I've had games where Corbinite just wins me an endgame because my opponent does not have enough burst damage into it. The final Pokemon is Amoongus, and as I mentioned, this is, I think, a Pokemon that you bring into pretty specific matchups. So if I see Dondozo or Trick Room, I'm immediately thinking, okay, Amoongus should come out. But if I don't see those matchups, then I generally don't bring Amoongus. That's not to say that it's a bad Pokemon. Like, it can be really valuable because of Pollen Puff, right, being able to heal up your own Pokemon. But I just think that Amoongus doesn't offer nearly as much offense as the rest of the team. And so in the right matchup, this thing is awesome. But otherwise, I actually sometimes prefer just having a lot more damage across the board. So that's just a personal preference. But yeah, the team creator mentioned that this was mainly on the team for Trick Room on Dondozo matchups. As you see, this Amoongus doesn't have Protect, it has Clear Smog, so against Dondozo you have an amazing time just being able to get rid of their boosts immediately. And Clear Smog can be really valuable into other setup Pokemon as well, um, but it's on this team very specifically for Dondozo. So, yeah. That's it for a quick breakdown in terms of ways to play with the team. A lot of different leads. Titar Exca if you want to just go on the offense immediately. Although, like I mentioned, I generally like conserving Excadrill for the late game. Uh, I actually often like a combination of Salamence, Okidogi, and Corviknight, especially into teams with Landers and Carnet, uh, because then you are just like completely immune to Earth Power if you Terra Flying Okidogi, for example. You can disrupt your opponent. You know, these Pokemon generally won't pick up big one hit knockouts, but they will be able to start distributing damage, often bait out Terras as well. And what I really love doing with this team is baiting out a Terra so that Excadrill can just kind of sweep in the end game, right? But, you know, you can go for any combination of leads. I think I also often like Excadrill, but then Tyranitar in the back. And the idea is that is really helpful against opposing teams that might have Weather, right? And so, like, if they have a Torkoal on their team, or if it looks like maybe they have Sunny Day, uh, I generally like the idea of conserving Tyranitar. And sometimes I even use Excadrill as bait where I lead it, but I use the other Pokemon to kind of um, do damage while protecting with Excadrill and even swap out Excadrill afterwards and then, once again, try to conserve it for the late game. But, yeah. Um, um, the team creator, like I mentioned, also wrote a team report in Japanese, so you can find some more in-depth details translated down uh, if you use Google Translate, for example, uh, to get a better sense of how the original team creator likes playing with the team. But that's it for a quick breakdown. Now let's highlight some weaknesses. So in terms of weaknesses, I think first of all to call out for Excadrill, you don't want to go up against Pokemon that don't take too much damage from your attacks and they can threaten you with super effective damage if not one hit knockouts. Obviously you have Focus Ash on Excadrill so you can often survive a big attack, but examples of Pokemon that you don't love going up against include Landorus Incarnate as well as Water Urshifu. 
Ironically, this team has Corviknight, but opposing Corviknight is also actually really scary, and I think it's actually one of the toughest Pokemon for this team to fight up against. Uh, I've also played against a Registeel, and like anything with Body Press, for example, can be really scary. Like Corviknight with Brave Bird and Body Press is a nightmare for this team to deal with, but uh, Body Press and Fighting type damage in general can be scary since it handles Titar and Exca pretty well. Like this duel just does not love going up against Fighting type Pokemon, and your response to it normally would be Flying Terra, for example. Um, I, I actually find that I lose a fair number of games where if I commit my Terra early but my opponent makes one good defensive play and suddenly it kind of like gets rid of this surprise offense that I'm going for, whether it be the surprise flying Terra Blast or surprise Stellar Earthquake, for example. Um, with Tyranitar here, you're really weak to fighting type attacks and fighting type Pokemon, so be careful. Uh, flying Terra is going to be the way around it, but like I said, if you commit your Terra to something else early, then you're just so much more vulnerable. And I've had end games where I have like a really big lead, but Tyranitar is just kind of like a sitting duck because it's slower than most Pokemon and a single fighting type attack will just obliterate it. You also don't have Protect on anything on this team other than Excadrill, so keep that in mind. That's something that your opponents can take advantage of. And another thing to think about is that you're not necessarily super fast with most Pokemon other than Excadrill in Sand and Salamence to an extent. And so opposing teams that have a lot of speed and offense can sometimes just overwhelm you before you're able to do too much. And so, yeah, those are just a couple things to consider. Obviously, opposing weather can be a little scary as well, though I actually think Tyranitar has the advantage of doing pretty well into most of the opposing weather. But if they have a way to control the weather, like Sunny Day or Rain Dance, that can be a little bit annoying because then it just immediately drops extra drill speed another thing that i've like str sometimes struggled against is like late game intimidate against extra drill this team does a really good job of deterring intimidate because you have okie dogie and corbinite which is part of what makes the synergy so powerful but sometimes i've had games where it's like my opponent will still just have intimidate in the late game and that can be pretty scary especially if okie dogie and corbinite are not out on the field so yeah those are just a couple things i wanted to call out okay we've got whimsicott urshifu flutter Ferrigaraf, golden goal and landorus so there's Tailwind and Trick Room on the opposing side. When I see Landorus Incarnate, I immediately think about the Flying types here in the Salamence as well as Corviknight. And I think Flying Terra Okie Dogie is actually one of the best responses to Landorus. So I'm thinking about leading this. Amoongus, not the best pick into Golden Goal and Whimsicott since both are immune to Spore. And Landorus normally has Substitute as well, so I don't love that. Probably want to lead Okie Dogie. I think leading Excadrill is actually interesting, although normally you'd want it in the back. Um, I think something like Corviknight and Okidogi or Salamence and Okidogi could work, but Salamence is interesting in this one since the Intimidate's actually really not valuable at all. Other than to reduce like close combat damage from Urshifu. I actually think Corviknight's really good here with Brave Bird and U-Turn. So I don't mind Okidogi Corviknight and Tyranitar Excadrill in the back. I think I could also consider leading Tyranitar and Excadrill outright, but there are a lot of threats to it, right? For example, Golden Go and Urshifu threaten the Tyranitar immensely. Urshifu also is just a big threat to Excadrill. Landorus is kind of annoying for both of those to deal with as well. So it's going to be Whimsicott and Landorus. Okay, that works for me. So in this position, normally people are going to want to just go for like Earth Power onto the Okie Dogie. So I'm fine just going for Terra here and then going for Knock Off onto Landorus as well as Brave Bird. The idea here is eliminate Landorus early and then Tyranitar plus Excadrill I think should have a pretty good matchup. I expect Urshifu in the back, which is fine. One of the nice things about Tyranitar is setting up the Sand, which breaks Focus Ash on Pokemon like Whimsicott and Urshifu. I think it's likely either like Sash Whimsicott Choice Band Urshifu. It could be Scarf Ursh as well if it's Water Ursh. I mean, it could be Scarf Dark Urshifu, although that's not super common. Choice Band something that people have been using a little bit more as well, but yeah. Uh, Landorus Incarnate's pretty annoying for the Sand combo to deal with, which is exactly why I wanted to lead something like a Give Landorus Trouble. So we're going to commit Flying Terra here. Okay, they just go for Moonblast, so no Tailwind, and you can see with the Salt Vest, we take that like a champ. Special Attack Drop does not matter, and they go for Earth Power. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I think uh, Flying Terra Okie Dogie is such a critical component to this team. So we remove their Life Orb. So now your Sludge Bomb really doesn't do much damage. And even if Braver doesn't KO here, that's totally okay. Because Landers is doing nothing to either slot right now. The only thing you can really do is threaten this with Sludge Bomb, which isn't that scary. So, I would think Whimsicott wants the Tailwind now. I could see Landers protecting. Uh, It could switch out as well. 
I don't mind going for knockoff into this slot. I actually think it's fine to just knock off and Brave Bird here because it covers for a Landorus switch. If they stay in, knockoff just gets the knockout, and they're actually just gonna click Moonblast again. Interesting. And Sludge Bomb, I presume? Yeah, but with the Salt Vest and no Life Orb, that is not gonna get the knockout. So Okie Dogie has tanked so many attacks already. So we get the knockout onto Landorus, which is perfect. That is the biggest threat to the Tyranitar and the Excadrill in the back, so eliminating that early on, I think, is really, really pivotal. We're going to Brave Bird into Whimsicott, and it indeed is going to have the Focus Ash. Okay, that's fine. What we can do this next turn is just pivot out into Tyranitar, which immediately gets the knockout onto Whimsicott at the end of the turn, thanks to Sand. And the main question now is, what do you even switch into, right? If it's Dark Urshifu, for example, well, I can Drain Punch and Brave Bird that slot. And uh, having Focus Ash on Excadrill is really pivotal in this endgame as well. So... This is a good game to showcase how you want to beat Landris Incarnate with this team. Because Landris is one of the most common Pokemon in the meta right now, and Tyranitar and Excadrill don't necessarily have the best matchup into it, especially with it not being Assault Vest Tyranitar. One approach I guess you could take is, for example, just Flying Terra Tyranitar Tar 1 and just like Iron Head plus go for the Terra Blast. It's going to be Golden Go coming out. Okay, that's fine. I think here you're more or less forced to Tailwind, and they could go for Make It Rain. I'm fine with Make It Rain coming out. I'm actually just going to go for Knockoff here, and U-Turn into Whimsicott. I think here it's fine to just take the Knockout onto Whims. I could U-Turn into Golden Goal, but I don't really think that chip damage really makes too much of a difference. It's Endeavor! Okay! That's cool, but unfortunately for them, we have the Wiki Berry, so we'll be able to heal back pretty significantly. But I'm wondering if your specs Golden Go, whether or not this actually gets the KO. It does not. Corviknight hangs on with 9 HP. And this is huge, because what this allows me to do now is you turn into the Whimsicott, your Golden Go is stuck at minus 1 special attack, and this means that they don't get Tailwind up for the remainder of the game. Which is huge for us. So now we'll knock out Whimsicott. We're up 3-2. They still haven't Terrid yet, which is the main consideration, but that's fine. Because this allows me to now pivot out into the Excadrill. And Excadrill is a really nice late game closer for this team, right? Especially into Golden Goal right now. I expect Urshifu as their final one, personally, but let's just bring out Tyranitar. It is interesting if it's Urshifu, because with Urshifu, you do have a lot of KO pressure onto my side of the field, right? But the Urshifu is also not going to be Focus Ash, which would be interesting. Choice Band would make a lot of sense. I don't know if that was Specs damage on a Corviknight. We didn't see a Life Orb. It is indeed going to be Urshifu. And it's Dark Urshifu. Okay, cool. Uh, I mean, I think the main thing I'm curious about now is if they have, like, a defensive terror on either of these. I personally want to actually just go straight for low kick onto Urshifu, and high horsepower onto Golden Go. I think I could also switch Tyranitar onto Corviknight and Earthquake, but I'm worried about Golden Go going for a defensive terra. And I think with this, like, we threaten both slots for a knockout, right? So you can Terra one slot, but you can't Terra both. I actually expect Urshifu to Terra here, but let's see. Okay, it is going to be Golden Go Terraing. But it's into Steel, so that doesn't help against High Horsepower doing super effective damage. Now the question is whether or not you're bulky enough to survive. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Cool. Yeah, I figured with them going for Make It Rain immediately there, plus the Endeavor combo, that they're a little bit more offensive. Um, and so Steel Terra makes more sense. Yep, they went for Wicked Blow. They were trying to just go all in here, right? And just get a double knockout, but Low Kick now comes out. Super effective, and that's two knockouts. Perfect. Uh, what's interesting here is like a lot of people do run Dark Terra or Stellar Terra on Urshifu, and Steel Terra is more common on the offensive Golden Goes. So I figured in this position, it's like... I have KO pressure onto both slots, essentially, and it's kind of hard for you to actually get a knockout onto both slots, right? Um, because you're at minus one special attack with Golden Go. Uh, the worst case scenario would have probably been, like, Golden Go protecting and then Urshifu just close combating into the Tyranitar slot. Um, but, yeah, I think, like, Excadrill is still exerting so much offensive pressure there, right? And if you do that, then I get Corviknight out, and then I can just click uh, Roost plus Earthquake. 
uh, which obviously puts on a lot of pressure as well. So I think Excadrill is really nice as a late game closer for this team. It would have been a little bit nicer to like bait out their Terra earlier on in this battle, because if we had baited out a Terra, then Excadrill doesn't have to worry about like a defensive Terra from Golden Go, for example. Um, but I figured High Horsepower there at least should do neutral damage, and if you're Steel Terra or you don't Terra Golden Go, should just get the knockout there. All right, we've got Flutter, Instant, Urshifu, Moongus, Raging Bull, and Water Pawn here. Tyrannifier Excadrill honestly seems decent. Uh, Corv is intriguing to me to bounce back Intimidate from Incineroar. I mean, Okie Dogie is also nice just because of Guard Dog. This strikes me as a game where I think I can lead Okie Dogie with Excadrill and then Tyranitar in the back. Hmm. For the fourth, I actually think Corv is really solid because of Taunt. One of the other things is because most Raging Bolts are going to be Fairy Terra, if we bait out a Terra from that, then like Gunk Shot and, you know, uh, Iron Head do super effective damage. <sighs> Salamence and Corv are both good here, but Corv is a little bit better to give me an Amoongus answer. I'm almost thinking I should be leading Corviknight, to be honest. Mence is okay, though. It's mainly Intimidate into Ogre, right? And Air Slash. It does give me Tailwind as well. Okay. Uh, I think, yeah, I'm going to go Okie Dokie Corv, Titar Exka again. So the reason here is because if an Amoongus is led and I go with Okie Dokie plus basically anything that's not Corviknight or Amoongus, I'm really spore weak and I don't really want to bring Amoongus into this matchup either. Although, honestly, I don't think it's terrible. Like, Clear Smog is actually pretty good into Raging Bolt. We're gonna go with Ogre Pond and Bolt. Okay. Uh, so, Okie Dogie right now has a really good matchup. Obviously, Corviknight caught in a slightly difficult position. One of my questions is what kind of Ogre... Or, sorry, what kind of Raging Bolt set this is. I would love to just Gunk Shot here. I could switch Corviknight out into Excadrill, but it does open up the risk of them targeting this with uh, IB Cudgel. So I'm actually intrigued by going for Taunt here onto Bolt. Okay, no Terras, no switches. They just Cudgel into us. And Dragon Pulse, but with Assault Vest, we should take that. Beautiful. Gunk Shot does not miss, which is absolutely huge for us here, as we're able to get a one-hit knockout. Amazing. And now I Taunt the... Raging Bolt, so I'm really happy with that turn. Clearing Water Ogre Pond is actually a really big deal because it means no more redirection from the Excadrill. And the redirection is quite annoying. We're going to bring Urshifu out. It's going to be Dark Urshifu. Okay. What do I want to do here? Drain Punch into this slot. I, like, the obvious play, I think, here is to switch Corviknight out. But I'm really worried that, like, they end up close combating that slot. And I think Excadrill T-Tar in the endgame is so important for me, so I'm actually going to stay in here. I'm fine losing both Pokemon here to get two free switches into T-Tar plus Exca. Okay, they just go for Thunderclap. That's fine. Yeah, we survived that. And Wicked Blow. Cool. Works for me. Yeah, this is perfect, right? Because now I just get Excadrill out. And one of the beautiful things about Excadrill in this format is its matchup into Raging Bolt. So we'll get Brave Bird here onto the Urshifu. Tons of damage there. Excellent. And now that activates our berry as well. Fantastic. So we're going out into Excadrill now. This turn is interesting. You don't have any ground resistances or immunities to at this point. Um, I'm actually... So this seems kind of crazy, but I'm actually thinking about switching Corviknight out into Tyranitar and then going for Stellar Terra and just Earthquaking here. 
The reason for this is because Corv actually has a really good matchup into everything else in the back, and I can just keep roosting up, and this allows me to set up the sand so that Excursor just outpaces both Pokemon on their side. Because uh, I actually don't think Tyranitar is that pivotal as a final Pokemon for me here, and like they don't have any ground resistances or immunities at this point, and this play could just win us the game immediately. So, I'm going to go for it. Okay, Bolt switches out, which is fine. I'd love to see Incineroar here, honestly. Beautiful. Okay. This actually bounces back the Intimidate as well. My main question now is the Bolt set, right? Like, do you go for a Fairy Terra in this endgame? I also don't know if the Stellar Terra EQ actually gets the knockout onto Incineroar here, so we'll have to see. I think in the ideal scenario here is that Urshifu did not go for Sucker Punch, we get the knockout with Earthquake, and then even if Instant and Tyranitar both hang on, that's fine, because, like, Exca's just in a position to sweep this game at this point, given that we cleared Water Ogre Pond. Beautiful. They don't go for Sucker Punch, they don't protect. So we get the Earthquake off. Cool. And uh, the Instant hangs on, Tyranitar hangs on as well, and I'm totally okay with that outcome. But yeah, this is one of the scenarios where I just felt like it's worth it to pressure with the amount of damage that we have with Stellar EQ, and I'm totally happy with this outcome. Raging Bolt comes out. I mean, to be honest, Bolt just does not have a good matchup into Excadrill at all. Uh, what do I want to do here? Like, I pressure both with Earthquake here, so you could obviously fake out into this slot, so I could reset the Intimidate right now and switch out. But I actually don't mind having KO pressure onto both slots, right? Because, like, what is Raging Bolt even threatening Excadrill with, right? So, I don't mind guaranteeing the knockout onto the... Um, onto the Incinera right now. Yeah. Okay, they're going to Terra here. I would guess a uh, Fairy Terra on Bolt. Beautiful. Uh, this now means that my win condition is just switch out Excadrill, bring it back in, and just click Iron Head. With Stellar Terra, that should just get the knockout. Okay, fake on an Excadrill. We flinch. And they Dragon Pulse into Excadrill. Yep, that's fine. This is one of the reasons why Excadrill is amazing in this format, right? You are able to really, really wall Raging Bolt, right? The Classic Raging Bolt sets are like Calm Mind, Thunderclap, Dragon Pulse, Protect, or if you're running Assault Vest, like Thunderclap, Thunderbolt, Snarl, for example. Uh, and it's actually the Leftover set. Okay, cool. That's fine. Yeah, so three turns of Sandstorm left. I am happy to just go for Iron Head and switch into Corv. We're going to swap out. I'm probably going to switch, switch to Excadrill out as well. Um, I don't know if it really makes too much of a difference. Like, I don't, Iron Head should not get the one-hit knockout here, but two Iron Head should KO, and, like, two Dragon Pulses won't KO us in return. That almost just KO'd even with Intimidate. And they go for Calm Mind. That's fine. Yeah, because it's like, you can't Thunderclap into Excadrill, which is the main thing, right? This is also why I wanted to taunt the uh, Raging Bolt on turn one. Uh, you know, it's funny because, like, Corviknight into Raging Bolt, you would think Bolt has a really good matchup, but if you're running just Thunderclap, Dragon Pulse, Calm Mind, Protect, you actually don't have a good matchup, because, like, I can always just avoid Thunderclap, essentially. So, yeah, we just keep clicking Iron Head here, and I can Roost here as well. And they end up forfeiting. Beautiful. So you can see how these Excadrill endgames are so, so powerful. If you're able to put yourself into a spot, like, we were intimidated by the Incineroar, but it was still fine, right? Like, I did so much damage. They probably needed to Sucker Punch the Excadrill, but, you know, from my opponent's perspective, they were probably thinking, well, I'm not really at that much risk because the sand isn't set up, right? Um, but, once again, the idea is I was honestly fine losing my own Tyranitar in this game if it meant getting, like, a double knockout, and if they had not switched out Raging Bolt, then the EQ just gets the double knockout, right? Uh, and it was just so much free damage onto the Incineroar, and I don't mind that because, once again, we were in a position where we cleared the one thing that really resists Earthquake, the one thing that could have been spooky, I guess, is like a defensive flying Terra or something that resists uh, ground-type attacks, but like Incineroar, uh, 
it, maybe it can run Grass Terra, but you'd have to bring it out, right, before I actually click Earthquake, and that wasn't the case. Uh, Urshifu that turn, I think them not Sucker Punching or Protecting gave me a huge, huge advantage. And once Urshifu went down, I figured, okay, our Excadrill Sash is still conserved, so we didn't even really need to switch out. And yeah, once again, this Excadrill just matches up so, so well into Raging Bolt. Okay, we've got Dondozo here, but it actually doesn't have Tatsugiri. Uh, Dondozo, Ting Lu, plus um, Gouging Fire is something I've seen a lot more recently. And it's fascinating because Dondozo, Ting Lu won the North American International Championships last year. Uh, a couple of players did really well with the Japanese qualifiers with it as well. And, and the idea is like, you know, it just is super bulky and soaks up a lot of damage. And it can be really difficult to deal with. Now, what's interesting is our team is mainly physical attackers, so I'm actually not as worried about Ting Lu's ability in particular. They have Amoongus, so I'm naturally inclined to want to bring Corviknight here. Yawn is also just pretty good, and I think Roost is also really strong. They don't have Intimidate on their end, so Excadrill should be able to do decent damage. Could be a T-Tar lead here, actually. I don't hate it. Uh, Okie dokie. I don't love. And because it's not Tatsugiri Dondozo, I don't think I really need Amoongus. Although Amoongus actually isn't terrible here, but I think I want Salamence Core of Titar Excadrill. Okay, I'm actually down to lead Titar Exca. Because uh, I think. They don't have that much burst power unless you lead with Champau Dragonite specifically, but Pow Knight doesn't necessarily have the best matchup into T-Tar Exca because I can just fly in Terra the T-Tar turn one and just go for something like Iron Head plus Rock Slide, which is generally a pretty safe play unless they end up clicking like Ice School Crash slash Ice Spinner into the Tyranitar slot. It's going to be Amoongus and Tink Lu. Okay. Uh, I mean, the play I want to make here is Flying Terra T-Tar and just EQ Flying Terra Terra Blast Amoongus. So I'm down to send it, I think. Obviously, Amoongus could protect her Terra here, so we'll see. But I think a lot of Amoonguses would feel like they're actually relatively safe right now. And Earthquake is still decent damage onto the Tinglu slot. If we can clear Amoongus, by the way, that's a huge, huge deal for us, because it just means no redirection anymore. Oh, nice. They don't protect. That's so good. Or Terra. Great. We should get a crit on Tinglu, which is quite lucky as well. We're really happy to showcase the T-Tar Exca combo here. And that's just a knockout. Amazing. So that's out of the way. They should go for Sand Tomb here on Taxi Girl. Okay. I'm okay with that. Because I think we're putting on so much offensive pressure here. And we cleared Amoongus immediately, which is really nice. And they're going to bring out Champau. That's fine. Corv's going to be really important. We're going to want to pivot into Salamence right now. I mean, if I were my opponent, I think this turn's actually really interesting because I would actually probably protect Champau. You could also just Sucker Punch, but then I could just switch into Salamence and Iron Head. They should protect Champau. I I'm still tempted to go for this. Because, like, it, it would just win us the game, I think, immediately if they didn't protect the Champau right now. And I think your incentive to not Champau is thinking, like, you can just Sucker Punch safely. But, I don't know. I think it was actually tempting to make the read they protect and actually just straight up Iron Head and Terra Blast into Ting Lu for a knockout. Ah, they did protect, so that play would have worked out really nicely. That's fine, though. I don't mind taking that risk, I think, because it could just win us the game outright. Okay, Throat Chop for a knockout. Sash, however, now is now broken on Champau, which is excellent. Okay. 
This is interesting. I could go into T-Tar and essentially I have double pressure onto the champ house slot with Draco Meteor and just like low kick or just Terra Blast. Could go into Corv here as well, but if I go into Corv, then they're always going to target the Salomon slot with an ice type attack. So I think I actually rather go into Tyranitar right now. Yeah, I'm going to launch Terra Blast here into Chien Pao. Personally, I think I'd like to switch men's here. I don't know, with the Intimidate and with Tyranitar being as bulky as it is, I wouldn't expect Pao to get the knockout onto it either. I am wondering if it was correct to just double up onto the... Team Lu slot last turn, but I don't know. Like in the case that they just attack with Champel and go for an ice type attack into the Tyranitar slot and get a knockout there, Excadrill fails to knock out Team Lu, and then they Team Lu knocks out Excadrill. I think that would be really ugly. I'm also Terra Blasting here since Ghost Champel Terra is a thing, and I don't want to lose to that by going for low kick onto that. Okay, Team Lu pivots out into Gouging Fire. That's fine. Mens has a pretty nice matchup against this. Get a speed boost. And it's Ice Spinner. Okay, we should definitely survive that with Intimidate. Nice. Perfect. We get Terra Blast. Very nice. With Choice Band, I think you should get the KO. Yeah. Beautiful. It is a shame, though, because Excadrill was honestly so good into my opponent's team in this endgame, and I think if I had made that double up onto Ting Lu, maybe we just win immediately. Because then I just pivot the Salamence in the subsequent turn and just Iron Head. But I think Corv's actually in a really nice spot in this endgame. It's also interesting, if you break and swipe, it gets redirected onto this. I think here I don't mind switching Tyranitar out into Salamence. Let's start stacking those Intimidates. I think just Brave Birding here is also fine. But I don't hate the idea of U-turning either. Because we're at an endgame now where I have Intimidate, I can keep cycling that back in and out, right? And the Intimidates go a really long way because I have double Roost on Salamence as well as Corbinite. Cool. They're gonna go for Terra here, makes sense. Onto Team Lu, into what? Fairy. Okay. Uh, I mean, I guess Fairy's a little bit annoying, but now Rock Slide from Titar is looking decent. Okay, they go for Howl, makes sense. We're gonna U turn out here. I guess they could have gone for Throw Chop onto the Corv slot. That would be a little bit surprising, though, but let's see. Whoa! Okay, that's really strong. That covered for the Salomon switching, but it does not get the knockout, which is nice. Cool. Huh, this is an interesting spot. You could Breaking Swipe now, you could Howl, you could Heat Crash. Fairy Terra Terra Blast was the worst thing to run into because I thought we were pretty safe against this, but that's actually really scary. If I were them, I would Heat Crash into Tyranitar personally. Huh. That was a really nice play by them. Wow. With this ability, I don't know if Draco gets the knockout onto this. I actually wouldn't expect it to. I think I want a Draco and Rock Slide here. Oh, nice. Okay, the Heat Crush into Salamence. That's huge. You eat up Rocky Helmet. Okay. I think it's still fine. I think Corv wins the 1v1 there, but that would have been a huge rock slide because they don't no longer resist it. 
That's unfortunate. Okay. But I, I think with Roost here, we're probably still okay. Uh, but I, I think if that Rock Slide connects, we definitely win. Because I think Rock Slide, Choice Band Rock Slide into a Brave Bird, I would expect to get the knockout. But 81% chance to get the double connect there. So 19% of the time we do miss at least one of the two. But, you know, it's a neutral Team Lu. I'm just going to go for Brave Bird right now. Oh, we're faster as well. Okay, that's good information. Cool. Runation. Nope, just throw chop. 188 down to 121. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Yeah, I'm just going to Brave Bird here. I could Roost, but like the problem with Roosting here is it actually makes me weak to ground-type attacks. And I, another Brave Bird just gets the KO here. So unless they crit, we win. Nice. Okay. That was a little bit scary just because of the miss. Um, but I think, you know, the upside here is Corvin just having such a nice matchup into the Ting Lu. But this game was fun because we were able to lead Tyranitar Excadrill and, like, Tyranitar was just able to put on so much offensive pressure. I do think a lot about that turn where they protected Champao because, like I said, if I just Terra Blast plus Iron Head there, like, maybe that's just a game-winning play immediately. But I also figured if they want to play a little bit risky and I end up Iron Heading Champao for a knockout, we just win the game on the spot. Uh, and even though that turn didn't go, like, super well for us, it was still fine, right? But Tyranitar was amazing for us in this game, right? Getting that knockout onto the... Um, Moongus immediately, and then also being able to just put on a lot of pressure and getting that Choice Band Rock Slide to just knock out Gouging Fire as well. Okay, we've got a Pseudo Sun team here. On paper, Excadrill looks like it should be really good here. I think Okie Dogi should be good. Them having Trick Room makes me think a little bit more about a Moongus. It also makes me think about leading Corviknight to taunt into the Frigoraph. If you wanted to set up Trick Room, their best bet would be something like Rillaboom plus Frigograph. You could go Instant Frigograph as well, but the Okie Dogi would be able to really take advantage of that. Hmm. I think my main question is whether or not I actually really want to bring Amoongus here, because I don't feel like it's absolutely necessary. I'm thinking... I mean, we want trying to try in the back for sure. Yeah, I think Okie Dogie Core feels fine here with Excadrill Titar in the back. But if there was a matchup for Amoongus, I think it would be this one. I just, they're not like hard Trick Room, so I don't want to dedicate too many resources to sh uh, stopping Trick Room. And to be honest, like Okie Dogie and Corv are also not terrible into Trick Room. Plus, we have Titar, which is a really good matchup into Torkoal. Now, if they were, like, hard Trick Room, I think Amoongus would definitely come out here. But it's going to be Torkoal Flutter. Okay. Uh, an Excadrill lead here would have been really strong for me, I think. But this is still fine. Interesting spot to be in. I think personally, I'd like to just gunk shot into Fluttermane and then switch out into Tyranitar right now. It could be, like, I would normally expect Specs plot Flutter in this position, but if they protect turn one, that could be a little bit awkward. Okay, no more Protosynthesis. They just Dazzling Gleam, that's fine. That looks like Specs to me. Gunk shot connects, huge. Beautiful. Clears Flutter out of the way now. But I did take a lot of damage from that Gleam. And Eruption, yeah. I'd say the leads here actually weren't super ideal for me. This is really interesting, though. If they bring out Incineroar Rillaboom right now, I get to just upper hand Rock Slide, and that might like be a game-winning play in itself. So I actually really want to see Incineroar come out right now. Or Rillaboom. I mean, you should bring Rillaboom out of those two. Like, Rilla would feel like a strong pick right now because you have Fake Out Pressure, right? The downside of Torkoal right now is that it's slower than both of my Pokemon, so essentially whatever comes out can't knock out both of my Pokemon. And it's Rillaboom! Okay, I get to use Upper Hand here, I think. Which would be huge. Grassy Seed Rillaboom, whoa. Okay. Nice. 
I would expect their last one to be Incineroar, but it could be Raging Bolt. I'm going to upper hand here. I'm not going to lie. I actually really think it might be worth it to upper hand and Terra Blast here. But they might even stay in with Torkoal right now. Like, you just fake out Tyranitar. But essentially, the way I see it is if I knock the Rillaboom out right now, it just opens the game completely for me. And I could see Torkoal switching out as well. So I'm going to go for it. Upper hand, flying Terra, and just Terra Blast. I'm going to send it. Okay, Torkoal staying in, which is fine. I'm really curious if it actually clicks Eruption. But basically, the logic in this play is I just really want Rillaboom out of the way. Um, and I think if Torkoal switched here and I get the knockout out of Rillaboom, I just win immediately. Beautiful. Upper hand does work. You flinch. Now I get Choice Band Terra Blast off. That's a KO. Cool. Let's see what Torkoal commits to. Probably Eruption, but it could be Earth Power. Yep, it is just Eruption. Okay, so I lose both Pokemon, but I don't think that's actually super bad for me, because I think Exca Corviknight has a really good matchup into whatever they have in the back. If Torkoal had protected or switched out there as well, I think that game, or that play just, like, wins me the game immediately on the spot as well. So even with this being, like, not the best case scenario, I think it's still okay. The main thing to think about is that because the Grassy Train is up, we probably don't want to be clicking Earthquake. But I can just High Horsepower Brave Bird into the Torkoal slot. And their last one is Raging Bolt, which is a dream scenario for the Excadrill in this endgame. Perfect. Yeah, I honestly thought Torkoal switching into Bolt there would have made a lot of sense, which was kind of what I was, uh, thought was like kind of the most logical play. But I think here I'm happy to double up onto Core. Or sorry, onto Torkoal. If it's something random like Flying Terra Torkoal, that would be scary. But almost all Torkoals are Fire Terra, unless like you're a defensive set, uh, but they're using Eruption. They actually protect uh, Bolt, which is totally fine. Great, we don't miss high horsepower. Yep, fail to get the knockout, but that's exactly why we Brave Bird at that slot as well. And the reason we can make this play is because what is Raging Bolt threatening Excadrill with, right? This is what makes Excadrill such an awesome meta pick, or anti-meta pick, I should say, uh, because Raging Bolt is one of the most common Pokemon right now. So, dream scenario here. Couldn't have asked for a better final Pokemon to go up against. Now I can high horsepower. And I'll go for Taunt here to deny you Calm Minds as well. Yep, and they tried a Thunderclap. Beautiful. That almost just got a one-hit knockout. Wow. And taunt as well. Nice. Yeah, it just prevents any potential setup shenanigans from the bolt. But I'm really happy about this game because I think it got to feature a lot of what makes this team super fun, right? We were able to set up Sand, we were able to put on a lot of offensive pressure with Excadrill in the end game, and we were also able to showcase the really cool part of being able to use Upper Hand on Okie Dogi. Uh, upper Hand is, you know, not a move that's used very commonly in VGC, but it can have huge, huge payoffs in the right scenario. And, like, you would never expect Rillaboom to get flinched there, right? So, basically, getting a free knockout onto that slot was absolutely amazing for us. And, yeah, like, I wanted Rillaboom gone because I figured that having Grassy Glide Pressure is a little bit annoying. Um, and being able to break that means that Excadrill just outspeeds everything in the end game. I think even Sinner were my opponent's last Pokemon actually would have been a little bit scarier, but to be honest, it's like, do I, it's still not that bad, right? Because then I bring out Exca, I bring out Corviknight, you bring out Incin, sure, you Intimidate into the Excadrill, but then the Intimidate also bounces back onto the Incineroar slot. Then my main question would be, um, like, the scary thing is that you have Fake Out Pressure, right? So I'd probably feel compelled to protect the Excadrill, and then Corviknight could Brave Bird into the Torkoal, but then if Torkoal just goes, like, Fire Terra Eruption, like, maybe you still knock me out. Uh, so Instant in the endgame could have been scary, just mainly because of the potential of them having Fake Out, um, Pressure. But, you know, then it's like, okay, if Brave Bird brings you down to, like, 60%-ish, and then High Horsepower KOs you, then it's Exca versus Insin. You have to Flare Blitz, you take a lot of recoil, but I have Focus Sash as well. So, yeah. Uh, would have been, I think, slightly closer with Insin over Raging Bolt, but with them having Bolt in the end game, it was, yeah, just really, really good spot for us. Um, it's also interesting, right? Like, part of what makes this team strong is you deter Incineroars from coming out, because you have Okie Dogie and Corviknight, so Excadrill just ends up being a lot stronger. Um, but I, I do think in this game, I could have actually just led Excadrill, um, and maybe had Tyranitar in the back. Like, I think Flutter plus the Torkoal is really 
it, it can be really scary to fight against Excadrill. I'm guessing what my opponent may have done in that scenario is like if I lead Exca, but I lead like Okie Dogi, I switch into Tyranitar, then you can switch Flutter out immediately and then actually just go for like Eruption or Heat Wave and bring Exca Drill down to Sash. If you do that and then Rillaboom comes out, you can pressure me with Grassy Glide immediately. But yeah, uh, in this game ended up working out where we were able to change the weather. Okie Dogi put in so much work with that Gunk Shot and Upper Hand, and Exca Drill was the perfect Pokemon to close out the game. Okay, we've got Flutter Chiyu, Torn Landorus, Entei, and Ogre. It looks like a good matchup for Titar Exca, but I'm worried about a couple things, like Sunny Day Tornadus here would be a huge pain. And then Landorus is also just scary. Torn Lando lead, I think, would be quite strong from their end. I'm thinking Salamence plus Okie Dogie with Titar Exca in the back. Uh, I don't love Corv as much here because it's not that strong to, like, Chiyu and Entei. So the general idea here is with Salamence plus Okie Dogi, I can Tailwind, I can Terra with Okie Dogi as well and put on a lot of offensive pressure. And I want T-Tar in the back because I think even though it looks really compelling as a lead option here, there's actually a fair amount of things that could give me trouble. Like Water Pond, for example. Lando. I think T-Tar is interesting if I just go like turn one Flying Terra, Terra Blast, though. It's Chiyu plus Tornadus. Interesting. Okay. Don't mind this too much. I think my main question is what kind of chi you said it is. Slower than men's. I don't mind tailwinding here. I mean, I'd like to drain punch. They could terra chi you, but if you end up tearing chi you, it means no more defensive terras for this game. It could also be fire. I don't know. Like it was tempting to consider clicking knockoff onto that slot. It is a terra. And to Ghost, okay. Yeah, maybe it's worth just going for knockoff there, but Fire Chi is also fairly common on these comps. Ooh, it's actually Icy Wind coming out immediately. Ooh, that's a really strong option. Okay. I thought Salamence would be safe here to set up Tailwind, but now I'm probably just getting hit by a Heat Wave. Okie Dogie dodges it. And Salamence does not survive that. Okay, nice turn by my opponent. Very nicely done. That's okay, though, because like I said, you've committed your Terra now. We were lucky to get a dodge there on the Heat Wave. So now this gives me a free switch into Tyranitar. And Tyranitar resists attacks from both ends really well right now. The problem is that they could maybe just Sunny Day. Ugh, sunny Day here would actually be brutal. Right, rock Slide knockoff here. Yep, it's sunny day. Oh, nicely done. I should have just read into Ghost Terra, but I don't know. Like, Fire Terra is actually really common on these comps to be able to... Ooh, and we get burnt. That is not great. I was going to say, Fire Terra is fairly common on these compositions because what it allows you to do is just burst your opponents for so much damage, but we at least do get a double knockout here. The problem is I don't have speed control. I didn't get Tailwind up, and Sand is no longer up either, so I think Excadrill unfortunately just gets outsped in this endgame. Um, I should have maybe just gone for the read onto Chiyu on turn one. It, because it's like, I think Fire Terra there is also decently likely. Icy Wind, I also should have done a better job of anticipating. So, yeah. Titor Exca as a lead here, though, I feel like would have been pretty darn good. Because what was the response in a Tyranitar? Even if you Sunny Day Heat Wave, Tyranitar still survives. Maybe I should have just let it in this game, honestly. Remember Outlanderous and Ogre Pond. Hmm. The problem is I'm locked into Banded Rock Slide. And uh, Ogre is Ogre's the main problem here, I would say. You know? Because... Like, I can fly in Terra Rock Slide right now, which I honestly kind of fo feel forced to. You know, Gunk Shot. Uh, the main problem is Landers and Ogre Pond should both outspeed Excadrill, unless for some reason they're, like, not running that much speed investment. And both of these mons generally run a lot of speed investment these days.
But this is a really tough spot because I can't switch out easily for weather control. Power whip. Okay, I mean, if they somehow, er for some reason, earth power that slot as well. <gasps> they did! Okay, if we don't miss gunk shot, I win. They missed Heat Wave on Okie Dogie, but honestly, Okie Dogie fainting there would have been also better for me because I would have had to free switch it into Exca. Oh, that's a shame, but you're going to miss attacks with this team sometimes. Rock Slide, Gunk Shot, Draco are all moves I can miss. Is there any way I wouldn't try to win this, though, now? Like, what if I switch Tyranitar out into Exca right now? And Gunk Shot. Because Excadrill is not going to win the 1v2 right now, but with this, I at least get to outspeed with Excadrill. And I also think there's a chance they end up sludge bombing into the Tyranitar slot. If it's sludge bomb, we can still win. In fact, I'd say if it is sludge bomb, we do just win. Well, no, not necessarily, because I still have to call the protects. Okay, 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 okay. It, it was looking doomed. It was looking doomed, but uh, might be salvageable. Flying Terror was the perfect Terror to have here. Gives us immunity to ground and resistance, and because they set up the sun, Water Pond's damage output is reduced. I don't know if high horsepower KOs is the problem, but... I want a high horsepower and Terra Blast here. Ah, oh, but they did spiky. Did they double protect? Okay. Wait, that's fine then, I think, right? I think a double is always fine, because it means that I just pressure you with the knockout with X on either slot next turn. The problem here is eating up the spiky shield damage. I could have been a protect this turn, but I think it's still okay. Because by resetting the sand, like, the speed order is Excadrill, Ogre Pond, Landorus, Tyranitar. So you only win off a double protect now. Or me missing high horsepower. I don't know if Iron Head gets the KO. <sighs> Could Earthquake here as well. But it's slightly lower damage output. It's probably offensive, but I don't know. High horsepower, it's like 95% versus, like, being worried about damage rolls. Okay, they don't go for a double. High horsepower connects. Nice. That's a KO. That was a crit, but I really don't think that mattered. Get Like, I went for the strongest option, right? Yeah, they just earth power and Terror Blast just wins. I think double protecting there, like, never wins you the game. It, you need to protect one Pokemon and attack with the other. By double protecting, like, there's not very much that you get out other than seeing what Tyranitar locks itself into. But, yeah, I actually can't believe we won this. I thought it was Doom for sure. Like, Landers Ogre Pond in the back is so strong, but um, the fact that we were able to get that Rock Slide off was huge. Because if they had just, if they had gone for like a water type attack plus Sludge Bomb onto Tyranitar, I probably would have just lost right there. But that's kind of a weird play to make, right? Because it's like the sun is up and um, Sludge Bomb into Tyranitar doesn't feel that strong either. But if they had done that, it would have covered for my Terra. And I, even if I didn't Terra, it might have still gotten the knockout, to be honest. Um, so the fact that we were able to get one huge rock slide off, I and mean, Okie Dogie had connected with Gunkshot, we also would have just won the game immediately, but still found a path to victory, which was huge. Okay, we have a really scary team here with a lot of combos. So there's Whimsica, and there's three different things it can click beat up into. Terrakion for Justified, the Annihilate for Rage Fist, and an Arm Rouge, which might be weak armor weakness policy. It's like a nightmare team to play against in best of one. Um, hmm. What do I want to do here? There's so many modes to cover, which is what I'm worried about. Whimsicott Annihilate probably feels like the strongest. How in the world do I beat Annihilate?
I don't know if I have a Whimsicott Annihilate matchup here. Which is fine, because, like, you're not going to run into that that frequently in tournaments or in online play. Uh, yeah, this is this is really scary. Uh, Corv Amoongus? Titar Exca? Like, I, yeah, I don't know. I didn't, Okie Dogie is interesting, because it does have a pretty good matchup into Terrakion, right? I resist its attacks. I went for Corviknight plus Amoongus because it's like, okay, if you bring up an Annihilate, I can at least go for Brave Bird and Spore onto you. But, yeah, I think the reality here is I cannot deny Beat Up if you are Sash Whimsicott. Ah, but they go with Whimsicott Terrakion, okay. Hmm. Also can't help but wonder if, like, Whimsicott is Taunt. Encore. Taun here would be really rough. I think I'm actually interested in Brave Bird plus switch into T-Tar immediately. The reason why I want to go for this is because I get the knockout onto Whimsicott even if you're focus sashed, and clearing Whimsicott means you can only click one of Tailwind or beat up this turn. Oh, they did just go for beat up. I don't know, like, I could have just stayed in with... I'm probably getting rock slided here, right? But if you weren't safety goggles on Terrakion, then that would have been a free spore onto that slot, so... I don't know, I'm okay with this generally, though, because the idea is to get the knockout on a Whimsicott, so then it sets up uh, the Excadrill for success. But it is just rock slide. That's gotta be Choice Ban or Life Orb, then, right? All right, I think that's just game over. <laughs> no life orb. It, that's got to be Bandit, right? That's my guess. My main question is whether or not it would have knocked out the Amoongus here. I mean, now you just Tailwind, I think. Uh, Tailwind Rock Slide. Okay, let's assume they are Choice Banded. This is still salvageable, potentially. So I don't want to give up yet. Because what we can do is just Iron Head here, get the knockout, Spore into Terrakion. I didn't think that would knock out Corviknight, though. My goodness. That's why I'm thinking it's Choice Banded, because I would not expect a regular plus 4 Rock Slide to KO. Uh, a lot of people use Covert Cloak on Terrakion, so that you can't click Fake Out into it on turn 1, but yeah, that was nasty. I also thought they would go the Annihilate route, so I tried to cover for that a little bit more, whereas like a Salamence lead here could have been interesting. Salamence Exca, for example. Yeah, Okie Doki would have been phenomenal into this, but... I thought Okie Dokie would have been really, really bad into Annihilate. That's what part of what makes my opponent's team so strong. You have a lot of different modes, and I can't cover for all of them. Okay. They Tailwind. Yeah, it's Rock Slide again. Okay, that's definitely Choice Banded. <laughs> Given that it just knocks out Amoongus like that, I had no way to win this with my lead. Oh my goodness. Wow. I, I want to do those damage calcs because I'm actually really, really curious. Uh, Choice Band makes all the difference. I, I'm also saying it's Choice Band right now. I'm, like, assuming so, because I really would not expect plus four rocks out of KO otherwise, but, um, let's see. I assume you have Torkoal in the back. But, I mean, it doesn't matter, right? Because you just... Oh, I guess I would... No, uh, Rock Slide single target now, so I don't even expect to survive that. And I don't have Protect on anything on this team other than the Excadrill, so... It's like everything is just Rock Slide bait. Um, the, the adjustment to make in a best of three against a team like this is I, like, if I wanted to beat Whimsicott Terrakion specifically, I would lead Okie Dogie, right? But Okie Dogie felt like a really weak pick with the uh, Armor Rouge potential. Uh, I mean, I'll just try to Stellar EQ here, but I don't think I'll... What? Hold on. We brought an Armor Rouge, so, like, I could theoretically survive Rock Side. You get a low roll, Earthquake gets a double knockout, and then your last one's Torkoal. I could actually win off that. But I'm a... Uh, okay, okay, never mind. This play always wins in the game, I think. Yeah, smart, smart. Unless I get a double protect to stall out your Tailwind. Huh. Okay. I also wonder, would I have done better if I... Yeah, because I do just get Earthquake off here with Stellar Terra. That is just a KO. 
I was gonna say, was there a chance of winning if I had just targeted Taraki on that turn instead of the Whimsicott? My idea, though, was I wanted to not KO Terrakion because I wanted to put it to sleep, meaning that they only would have one relevant slot, right? Two turns of Sandstorm. And two turns of Tailwind means I don't really have a way to win because even if I get a double protect here, you just close combat me. And... So the only way I could win is if for some reason Excadrill were actually still faster here, but there's no way. That would be completely mind-blowing to me. If I had one extra turn of sand, then the wing cons to go for the double protect play. But even if I got the double protect, like, Terrakion still just outpaces me anyway, right? Because, like, sand expires at the same time Tailwind does. Yeah, they just go for follow me. I was like, how funny would it have been if we were actually faster there? GG, GG. They did not even bring a Nihilate, and that was the Pokemon I was most worried about. So... Yeah, it's a really scary team to play against in best of one because I have to cover for Armor Rouge, Indy, Whimsicott, Terrakion, Whimsicott, Annihilate, Whimsicott, Armor Rouge even, Torkoal potentially as well. But yeah, the adjustment to make in this is to just lead Okie Doki because that, that Okie Doki Excadrill, right? Like that's a really interesting combo because I could fly and Terra Oki even and then just go for like Gunk Shot plus Earthquake on turn one. Like I actually think this is a really volatile matchup where I could win the game in a turn. Um, but I could also just lose immediately. But yeah, I don't think it was unreasonable to expect Corviknight or Amoongus to survive the rock slides. But like I said, I'm like 100% sure they were choice banded. Because if you weren't choice banded, you could have just stayed in with Terrakion as well. But let's pull up those damage calcs because I really want to showcase how much of a difference ban makes. So first of all, if it's just Jolly max attack Terrakion at plus 4 against Corviknight, you do 58.5 to 69.2% max. And if you turn that Jolly into Admin, it's obviously slightly higher, but it caps out at 76%. So this is why I was expecting to survive turn 1, right? The idea was, hey, you can only click one of Beat Up or Tailwind, you're probably going to want to click Beat Up. So if you click Beat Up, Corviknight survives, Brave Bird knocks out Whimsicott after the sand damage, even if you're Focus Ash. Then I just have Excadrill out in the late game, right? And I'll be able to outspeed her Terrakion, and I'll be able to even tank a potential attack by having that uh, Focus Sash on Excadrill. A lot of people do run, like, Poison Terra on Terrakion as well, so if you're Poison Terra, then Excadrill covers for, uh, you know, either you going for Terra or not Terraing. And then since they had Armrouge and Entity in the back, I think Excadrill was actually really well positioned to sweep, which is why uh, I don't regret the play that I made on turn one, since a lot of Terrakions are Covert Cloak. So if you throw Choice Ban onto the set, then the Corviknight actually still can survive, but it's a roll that's very much in my opponent's favor, 81.3% chance. However, if it were Jolly at plus 4 with the Choice Ban, it's actually a roll that's very much in our favor. So I don't know if they're running Jolly or Admin, but either way, our Corviknight had a chance to survive on that first turn, even in the worst case scenario. Uh, the Amoongus on this team, though, is a little bit more frail because we are basically max special defense. And so plus four Rock Slide Admin actually does have a very good chance to just get the one hit knockout outright. I think I'm a little bit more used to playing with, you know, more defense on Amoongus in particular. But yeah, uh, the main calc to highlight here is the difference Choice Band makes on this Corviknight. Because like I said, without Choice Band, even if you're Admin, uh, you don't come close to getting that knockout. And if I'm able to get the knockout onto the Whimsicott on turn one, I actually think we're in really good shape. So that's why I was saying this matchup, I think, feels really, really ball. Tile, but yes, I think uh, interesting to see this calc and you know how much of a difference obviously that choice band makes. Ooh, we've got a Porygon 2 team here. Okay, that's scary. Urshifu Ensign, Bull Ogre, Porygon 2, Landorus. Surprised to not see Team Lu, honestly, because like the core of like Porygon Ensign uh, and, and Team Lu, like you'll, and you'll often see like Golden Go, for example, where Flutter over Raging Bolt is really strong. Uh, I'm really worried about the Porygon matchup because it can heal, and healing is really annoying to deal with. So normally, if I see that, I would expect I would like would want to get a knockoff onto it to remove its Evil Light. Uh, I think Okie Dogie is a must here. It matches up phenomenally well into their team actually because I can fly in Terra to get around Landorus. It's probably darker Shifu, so I think Mens is less valuable. I'm down for Okie Dogie Corv. Excatitar, which I feel like has very much defaulted into uh, kind of the main combo I like going with when using this team. But the reason I like it here is because I think like Okie Dogie Corp does damage, but can also soak up damage, and you, you basically like bait out Terra, soften your opponent's team so that Titar Exo can come out and sweep. It's Landra's Porygon, which I'm honestly very okay with. Download special attack boost. Yeah. Uh, so my priority... Uh, this is interesting.
This probably has Ice Beam. It could also, like, just go for Terra Blast, normal Terra Blast right now. I think my priority is to actually still knock out Landers here on turn one, because, like... Oh, okay, nice. Uh, I don't, like, knock off Rayburn, I actually don't expect to pick up the KO, but that's okay, because we do a lot of damage. And we get rid of Life Orb, and then Landers is completely useless. The downside here is Landers may protect on turn one, which would be a fantastic play in this spot. But if they end up clicking Earth Power, I think this is a really good trade. Because um, by weakening Landorus, we put Excadrill in a phenomenal position to succeed immediately. Pretty beautiful. Okay, good. But yeah, the team creator had mentioned Ice Punch on Okidogi, and Ice Punch would have been so nice here. Just get the knockout immediately, but this is still fine. You're an Iron Head away from getting KO'd now. Landers probably switches here, to be honest. I almost want to upper hand here, thinking that they go for Thunderclap. But even if you Thunderclap, both of my Pokemon should survive. I mean, Excadrill is actually a really safe switch in right now. I'm... I think I actually want to double switch here. Yep, Lander switches. I'd love to see Incineroar come out first here so I bounce back the Intimidate. But it's just Porygon, which is fine. Uh, in this spot, basically, I think the, the Lander switching out was really obvious, so I think knockoff into that slot is also acceptable. Um, but I think, like, Titar Exca getting in like this is actually really powerful for me because. Choice Man Rockside right now is actually really well positioned, right? And Bolt is not a huge threat to either slot right now. Okay, get Thunderbolt, good. So upper hand would not have worked out well for us there. But I'm very happy with this turn. This is in a pretty bad spot. It's also not leftovers. So Assault Vest would make sense. I personally would expect that to switch. Your only rock slide switching would be Urshifu. Uh, I wonder, is there any chance high horsepower plus... So, like, one play could go for his Iron Head rock slide, which gives me a really good chance of flinching. I'm also thinking about knockoff. I'm down for rock slide here. Yep, bolt switches. Uh, and I wanted to go for rock slide to get chip damage on whatever comes in. Or just get a knockout onto Landorus. I'll take that, because that's the biggest threat eliminated now to Excatitar. And like if Porygon flinches here, they're in such bad shape, right? Okay, we miss on Porygon though. It's unfortunate. Still okay for the most part. We get a knockout until the biggest threat to our sand core. Let me go for Trick Room, yeah. Trick Room's okay, though, because now my question is, what are you bringing out that's going to sweep me under Trick Room, right? Okay, Incineroar comes out. But I don't really see how they deal damage into Tyranitar right now, which is obviously good for us. Flare Blitz would obviously make a lot of sense here. I'm okay going to Okidogi. And I'm fine fine just clicking Rock Slide right now. Like, this is kind of one of the inherent problems with Incineroar Porygon 2 as a combo, which is that, like, you struggle to deal damage sometimes. And so even with the Intimidate, I think Bandit Titar is honestly still in a really nice spot. But yeah, I think if that Rock Slide had connected and we got a flinch there last turn, we probably just win the game. Nice play, Ice Beaming Okie Dogi. Actually, pretty meaningful damage. Probably Flare Blitz there as well, but Tyranitar is faster than Incineroar here, so their Trick Room just works against them, and we get a crit there, so <laughs> that just gets the knockout. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, like, even if we don't get that crit, you're maybe Flare Blitzing into the slot, maybe Parting Shot into Tyranitar, but I just, like, don't see how they're ever beating Titar in this endgame, especially with them setting up Trick Room, because by setting up Trick Room, my Tyranitar outspeeds your Raging Bolt and your Incineroar under Trick Room, so, yeah. 
Um, obviously, that crit was quite lucky, but I think we were in a totally fine position, right? I would guess Incinerator would want to click Parting Shot in that spot, maybe Flare Blitz. If you Flare Blitz, you might even end up fainting from Rock Slide plus Recoil and Sand. If you Parting Shot, okay, you get me down to minus two, but I'm still getting a lot of free damage off, and then I can just pivot the Tyranitar out. Okie Dogie also can take an attack from the Porygon, and I can even upper hand into the Raging Bolt if I think they're going to Thunderclap me. So, yeah, uh, I think it, it would have been really difficult for them to win that game because... Uh, we just have so much offensive pressure, and if your Incinerator ends up pivoting out, it means that it has to come back in at some point, meaning that uh, your Intimidate will either give me a Guard Dog boost or give me a, uh, a Mirror Armor, right? And I'll be able to bounce it back as well. So, yeah, I, I, like, I think the main thing here is we were able to prioritize that Landers was the win condition for them and eliminate it early on, which was just huge. Okay, we've got a pretty standard team here, although Dragonite is interesting. It, like, always comes back and then disappears and comes back again, but Furograph usage I feel like has been decreasing a little bit, so it's a stronger pick. But Chen Power, Rishifu, Lando, Flutter, Rilla, Dragonite. This team was actually legal for Worlds in 2023, so no brand new additions. Uh, I think my main decision I'm trying to make here is whether or not I want Salamence or Corviknight, because I definitely want Titarexka and Okie Dogi. Salamence is tempting for Draco and Rocky Helmet. Corv is so good into this, though. They don't have a single flying resistance. Okay, I think it's the classic Corv Okie Dogi with Titarexka in the back. I, mean, I love Corv's matchup here. Um, I think Salamence is cool because of Rocky Helmet, but I don't love the, uh, you know, a huge glaring weaknesses to Salamence. Or sorry, to Fluttermane as well as Chimpao. Flutter and Dragonite. Okay. Ah, oh, Titar X actually would have been really strong here. I'm a little bit surprised to see this lead. Booster speed? Okay. Uh, normally this is banded. Hmm. I'm worried about Stomping Tantrum here or Aerial Ace. So I kind of want to Terra Gunk Shot here. And I like the idea of U-turning, because Dragonite, if it's banded, will probably lock itself into something. And if I U-turn out here, I can go out straight into Excadrill or Titar. But yeah, I think, I don't know, Tarantar Extra Joke here may have worked out pretty well for us. Like, I could have just gone Iron Head, Flying Terra, Titar, Rock Slide. They just Dazzling Gleam, which I'm fine with. Ah, it's Scale Shot Dragonite. Okay. Seen this a decent amount recently, and it makes a lot of sense because it's just strong in terms of offense. Defense drop, but you get the speed boost. Yep. Gunk shot does connect, which is good. Oh, that's really bad to not get that knockout. I should have actually assumed I wouldn't get the KO there. Um, hmm. That is not great. We reached 280, so Flutter with Speed Booster should outpace us. Okay. I wonder if U-Turn would have actually finished off Flutter there. I would expect t to hang on from a double up here, though. So, like, what I want to do is simply... And Flutter faints from one more turn of Sand, which is also good. Actually, because Flutter just faints, I wonder if it's ever right to just switch t out here. Because, like... They could make a crazy play of just, like, Moonblasting here. But I think this is the best spot T-Tar will get all game, to be honest. So I don't mind switching into Corv here and Rock Sliding. Uh, and I say it's the best spot it'll have because, like, it, what else are they going to have in the back, right? Like, Champau, Urshifu, Landorus, all of those have good matchups into Tyranitar. Ah, but it's Protect Dragonite. Wow, okay. <laughs> Uh, 
All right. Sunny Day Flutter, as well as Protect Scale Shot Dragon Eye. There, definitely some surprises right here. That explains why they led uh, Dragon Eye plus Flutter, because they knew they could just Sunny Day on turn one. Although I still could have just gone Iron Head Rock Slide, to be honest. How comes out now? Uh, I think T Tar definitely needs to swap out here. I don't mind U turn and then switch in Okie Dogie. U turn's interesting because, like, let's say you knock out Okie Dogie, I can get T Tar and Extra Drill position out actually immediately next to each other, and I'll have broken the Focus Ash on the Chen Pao as well with this play. I thought about Brave Burning Dragonite because they already have the defense drop and sort of Rune is up. But I still don't know if I do enough damage to knock out Dragonite is the thing. So, we're on Okie Dogie. I mean, Corp I feel like is so well positioned right now, though. Oh, we actually dodged Skill Shot. Okay. And dodge Ice School Crash. Uh... I wanted skill shot to connect there though, because uh, the idea was to get a double free switch in, so. But I'll take it. I mean, that was obviously really lucky. We can go into Exca now. Yeah, like, if skill shot had connected th with to this, I get T Tar out safely, and then with T Tar, like, I don't have to switch. Uh, okay, I don't mind protecting here, actually. And gunk-shotting. The reason for this is to bait out a protect from their end, but they're just going to Terra. Onto Dragonite, into what? Okay, uh, now you are weak to ground-type attacks. But that Terra does make a lot of sense, I think. But now we bait out Protect from Chien which is perfect. Cool. Yep, that was the whole idea behind Protecting this turn. I don't care if you knock out Okie Dogie, it's a free switch and into T-Tar. Good targeting, though. Nicely done. Okay. Yeah, so if Okie Dogie had pre I guess it's interesting, though. If it fainted previously, I'd bring out T-Tar, and then maybe I would just click Iron Head. Um, another defense drop. Boost. Actually, I don't even need to switch here. I just Iron Head into Champ Out, no? What could switch into Iron Head? Rillaboom? I think Iron Head into this. And uh, do I want to low kick or knock off is my question. They could switch into... Lando, Urshifu, or Rillaboom. I think I'm fine going for knockoff. Yep, they protect. I wish we could have played this game, though, without the skill shot and Icicle Crash Miss. Like, that was just insanely lucky, but I felt like I still would have been in okay shape. The main thing that was scary is Icicle Crash potentially flinching Champau. Or, sorry, uh, flinching the Corviknight. Uh, but baiting out the Terra on Dragonite and then not getting value out of that turn was really, really important. It's going to be Ursh as their last one. Okay, cool. Water Ursh. Okay, I mean, I think I just Earthquake here and switch out. I don't know how fast Dragonite is, though. It could be max speed. If you're max speed Dragonite, that'd actually be really scary. Nicely done. Uh, to be honest, like, Corv and I could still just win this game for me, but it's looking a lot harder now. I don't think there's much I could have done to prevent that double protect, though. Um, I think, yeah, it's like two-thirds of the time we win the game right now, right? Because mm -hmm. I think there's actually a good chance Corviknight still just walls this Dragonite. Which is why I thought it was such a pivotal Pokemon in this matchup. Yeah, I will just low kick here now and break right into this. 
Because I think Ursh actually needs the Surging Strikes in the Corp. And we still have the Berry and we have Roost. So I'm actually not that worried, despite them getting the double protect, but we'll see. Oh, Steel Terror Iron Head. Okay. Doesn't KO, though. Oh, they actually double up onto that. Okay, so they end up kind of wasting a turn, honestly. So Steel Terra, Iron Head, as well as Scale Shot and Protect. So what is the last move? Extreme Speed? Either way, I don't see how you're ever really dealing damage to Corv here, and you're at minus two defense. This is, however, where like that Icicle Crash Miss definitely hurts them, right? Because if not, they would have at least gotten some more free damage onto us. Uh, I don't mind clicking Roost here to start, just to see what they want to do. Okay, yeah, their win con is just a billion flinches with Iron Head, but with Roost, I think we're good, because they're only doing 30 per hit. Yeah. And this is why I thought Corv was such a good pick into my opponent's team. They didn't have really anything that threatens it with immense damage. No fire types, no electric types. So... Okay, 205 down to 172 for 33 damage. We get Brave Bird off. That is so much damage with those defense drops. Oh my goodness. Sandstorm subsides. Not that it makes a difference here. We'll roost again. We just want to click Roost here because we want to avoid them going like flinch, 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 crit, for example. There's one flinch. It would just feel bad if, like, the second Braper didn't KO, and then, like, we don't heal up when... Because, like, it's like they're just not doing that much damage. Okay. <laughs> we have the Wiki Berry here, though, so it should still be fine. <laughs> Nothing like a good little sweat here. Even with the crit, you don't KO here. Yeah. <laughs> if they actually flinched here and I didn't have the Berry, I would lose, probably. Yo, is this happening right now? <laughs> this is a game where if we lose, it would be like just crazy, right? Because it was like double protect into triple flinch plus crit. But the odds are so overwhelmingly in our favor. Okay, yeah. All we needed is one roost and it was fine. <laughs> oh my goodness, though. Go for one more for good measure here. That's crazy, though. <laughs> 173. Yeah, we're, we're fine. This is actually crazy. Oh my goodness. Because I really don't think one more Brave Bird KO, so I just want to roost one more time. That's all. What is... <laughs> like, do they have a scope lens or something? I I've healed enough at this point, I think. It's just always more optimal to heal back, but like now we feel back so much. And we're only taking 30 per hit, right? So, yeah. You need six more hits right now. Okay. This is why you don't give up, though, right? Like, if I didn't have that berry, <laughs> my opponent actually had a very good chance of winning this one. Now we just need one more Brave Bird. The idea, though, was to like, heal up to a point where, like, even if you get a bunch more flinches, it's still okay, right? Like, right now, my opponent needs four flinches in a row. Yeah. But that was a wild sequence. Double protect. Uh, flinch, flinch, crit flinch. Definitely kept my opponent in that one. Um, but I got very lucky with the Icicle Crash miss. Like, if that Icicle Crash had actually hit the Corviknight and they got all those Iron Head misses, or crits, uh, sorry, or flinches in this end, they, they actually would have won, right? Um, and once again, it's like, yeah, double missing is super, super tilting. Uh, and the mental damage it can cause also, obviously, can be pretty enormous. So I would have loved to play this game without those misses happening. Because I, I think we actually had a really good matchup in terms of Pokemon. But they had some really cool surprises in this one as well. But yeah, that was, wow. <laughs> All right, this team looks really fun. Thunderous, Iron Moth, Flutter, Rillaboom, Bolt, Wake. Rock Slide looks sick here. There's got to be Sunny Day, though, right? There's just got to be. With three Protosynthesis Mons. Um, team, like, Okie Dogie is a must bring here with AB. I wonder if it's, like, Acid Spray. 
speed booster moth. Uh, do, I, I mean, do I want Mence? I actually don't love any of the fourth mods I could bring here. I think Corv probably not. Way too passive. Mungus doesn't feel great either. So it feels like it should be Mence. I'm gonna go Exca, Okie Dogie, Titar, Mens. I don't like leading Mens here because I can't protect, and Mens is really weak to Flutter, Bolt, and Wake. Scary team comp. Let's see. Really cool stuff, though. I mean, like, Wake is something I feel like deserves more usage, but still hasn't been fully figured out. And uh, Thunderous, I think, is in an interesting spot in the meta right now because Eerie Impulse is really good with all the special attackers like Landorus running around. There it is, Thunderous and Wake. Okay. This is a terrible spot for Excadrill. Ooh, Proto Booster on that. Speed? That is interesting. I don't mind Gunshot Protect here. Like with the Salvest, Okie Dogie should be pretty tanky right now, but. Exca is in a really weird spot. It doesn't put on offensive pressure at all. Yep, there's the sunny day that I was talking about. They're probably just going for Hydro Steam. But it's into Exca good. And Gunshot doesn't miss, which is very lucky. That is so much damage. We even get the uh, poison as well, which is quite lucky. Do you faint from one more take of poison? You do. Okay. Um. I don't mind switching into Salamence right now, because I think Exca's not doing anything against these, but it's really good against the remainder of my opponent's team. So I don't mind just going for knockoff here and then switching out into Mens. Like, even if they Draco the Mens slot and KO it, I don't mind, because Exca is more important in this endgame. Like, Mens is not that great because I'm probably going to have to tear it just to even survive. So then it begs the question, why did I even bring this Pokemon in the first place? Like, maybe it should have just been Amoongus, honestly. And Amoongus switch in here would have been awesome. Hey, Sunny Day again. The reason for that is predicting Tyranitar to switch in. Well, this is why I didn't bring Amoongus. <laughs> Knock off on Thunderous. Normally it's Covert Cloak. Yeah. Okay, Wake is gone now. Good, good. And we're off to a really strong start. They've just been ignoring Okie Dogie, and I am very okay with that. I'm, I turn one. I'm actually really surprised Steam went to Extra Drill, but I think they probably are worried about Extra Drill because of how good it is into the rest of their team. Moth comes out now. I mean, if Gunk Shot connects on this, I feel like I just win. I'm kind of down to just Gunk Shot and Draco. There's the Terra. Okay. Basically, in my head, if we knock out Thunderous, I just have Weather Control, and then t the wins. That's a really risky Terra, by the way. Grass Terra opens up weaknesses to a lot of my attacks. Thunder Wave into Okie Dogie, which dodges it. Ooh, Meteor Beam. Whoa. That's really cool. With the power herb. Huh! Would not have expected that. I don't understand the Grass Terra on Moth, though, to be honest, because it's like, I probably would be gunk shotting that slot, if anything, right? Um, lucky turn for us there to dodge Thunder Wave, though, because the variance is actually kind of high if Thunder Wave connects, because Gunk Shot can miss, obviously, as well. Uh, we'll go on into Excanel. That's Raging Bolt. Works for me. Cool. Uh, I'm happy to just switch into Tyranitar now. And just Terra Iron Head. I guess this is a little risky in the sense that you could protect the Moth, or Moth survives Terra Iron Head, and then you actually double up to get the knockout onto Excadrill. But even then, I think now Tyranitar's just in a position to win. I thought about just clicking High Horsepower there, to be honest, onto the Bolt just to force it to be a 3v1. 
But I do actually need to get damage onto the moth as well. Okay, they actually didn't protect the, uh... Oh, that's a one-hit knockout. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know my Iron Moth Calc super, super well, because it's not super common. But I thought it would have survived, but they're probably just, like, max special attack, max speed. Uh, they just T-bolt into the Okie slot. Cool. Definitely lucky to hit the Gunk Shots, though, right? Like, Gunk Shot can be a pretty high-variance move. Uh, yeah, now we can just knock off into you and high horsepower into you. Right, they just end up protecting, that's fine. Protect is smart, though. You get to see what I want to do, and it also... Well, I mean, like, Extra Drill's never going to lose this endgame. Like, I could click Earthquake, which is 100% accurate versus 95% on high horsepower, but I don't even know if it... I was going to say, I don't know if it KOs. I feel like it should, right? With Stellar... I'm actually fine just going for it. I actually want to, like, learn this calc. <laughs> well, they're not going to give me the chance to. <laughs> yeah. But it was a scenario where it's like, you're never going to win a 1v1 bolt against Excadrill, and I have three Pokemon, so it doesn't really matter, and might as well use it as a learning opportunity. But, yeah. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. So thank you so much, as always, for watching. I hope that I have demonstrated the power of Pokemon like Tyranitar, Excadrill, as well as Okie Doge in this episode. And Corviknight was also absolutely amazing. And so I'm really impressed by this team. You know, these Pokemon generally are not very high up in terms of usage rates, but uh, the team feels exceptionally strong into a lot of the meta right now. And I hope that you can give it a good try as well. So thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoy, and I'll see you all next time. All right. Peace.